Hi, in this video I'll show you how to create a basic Gantt chart with milestone markers. So in this particular Gantt chart we have our different tasks, tasks 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, we've got our kind of Gantt bar charts, and we have these milestone markers, like phase 1 here occurs on the 18th and phase 2 here occurs on the 1st of March. Now the nice thing about these particular milestone markers, if things change, we can change those dates, right? So let's say uh, this particular milestone, it's not really on the 18th, it's on the 25th. I selected these two cells, 1-25-18, control enter to execute it for both cells. And now you notice that it's changed in 125. The same here, if we didn't, if we wanted to bring this up to 222, we can do the same here, 2-22-18, control enter to execute for both cells. And we've got it set up here for the 22nd of February. All right, and also we can have our changes here in terms of the start dates for the different tasks. Let's say this started on the 4th of the of January. Press enter and you can see those, those um, you can see the bars here adjust for it. So let's see how we can create something like this. I'll just delete this first and kind of describe first the, the cells here. So we, we have our, our start dates, right? These are just basic start dates. Uh, these durations, they're all uh, numbers here. And these durations, uh, the end date here is based on the calculation of the start date plus the duration, right? So the start date of the 4th plus 17 days gives us the 21st. I have some other cells that kind of reference the, the end date, right? So the, so the task for start 2 is going to be the end date of task 1, right? So you can see here if I change this to maybe, um, I don't know, 15, 10 days, 10 days, right? The end date is the 14th here and task 2 starts on the 14th, right? And so some are like that, and some are not. These are hard-coded in. Some of the other ones reference the end dates there. So that's a description of this particular table. Now this other table here, uh, the values here, the beginning value should always be 0, and the ending value can be any number greater than 0. In this case, I put 0 to 80. I'm thinking about uh, 0 to 100 and maybe an 80%. So an 80, I would think about it as an 80% line is adequate for the size of that particular bar. And basically this text uh, is just a label. It gives us a chance to label it and dynamically adjust the labels if we wanted to change this to something else. So let's go and create the particular Gantt chart. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to insert a blank chart first. I'm going to insert a blank 2D column chart and then I'm going to fill it out now. So now this is kind of a blank 2D stacked column chart and I'm going to start to select the data. So the first data I'm going to select is going to be the uh, duration. So I'm going to have duration for the series name and then for the series value. Let's delete that. It's going to be from cell C2 to C6. All right, so that's going to be that one. The second thing I want to do is add in the start date. So I add the start date and then I'll get my ser series values for the start date, put those in here. Right, click OK. You can see that it's kind of hidden over it. Uh, I should, should have started, had the start date first, so it cover, it's being covered, uh, the duration date is being covered. So let's move the start date up first. And now you should notice that it's not covered anymore, right? Because I want to have those duration dates be kind of out there. Now, what I want to do next is for my horizontal categories, I don't want this one, two, three, four, five, right? I want to have my task. So I click on edit and it's going to ask me for my label range and I'm going to select cell A2 to A6. Click OK and now you now you notice that it's properly put the labels there. Click OK. And now what I want to do is you can see Excel is trying to figure out what is the appropriate uh, time to start this particular access. We don't want it to start that beginning of that access at the Excel's guess. We want to start at whatever starts here. So the way the Excel sees dates is based on serial numbers. What I can do, let me click outside here, is click on that particular cell and you can see that it's displayed as date. What we want to do is get the number, the serial number for it, which is 43104. So you can see it's changed down here, right? What I want to do is I want to hard code that number in as the starting uh, horizontal, uh, horizontal access label. So click on that, right click, and go under Format Access. And what I want to do is I want to start the minimum at 43104. So take that, 43104, press Tab, 
and now it's starting at that particular point. I can probably turn this back into a date now. Take that and let's make it back into a date. All right, and so now this turns back into a date and it's starting off at the appropriate settings. Also, one thing to consider is I want to have not the task one at the bottom. See how task one is at the top. I want to change that to the top. So click on that. Go under my, um, it's I actually picked the right particular setting. I want, I want to do the access options and I want to have categories and reverse order. Click on that and now I've got my task one coming first from top to bottom to task five. Now I want to get rid of these particular orange bars because the ones I'm interested in is the duration of the, for example, the duration of the first task is 10 days, right? So 1 4 to 1 14, that's 10 days here, right? So I don't want to show these particular ones uh, below it, the other task, right? So I just need to click on the uh, the other series of data, right click, let's see, right click and fill it with nothing. So no fill, and also the outline is no fill, no outline, All right? So I click on that, and now you see it's gone. Also, one thing to consider is we've got uh, usually a week is seven seven days, right? Seven days per week. So we probably want to adjust that. So I'm going to click on the axis over here, and for my major units. It, Excel is kind of guess 10. Let's do 7. All right, so we're going to do 7, press enter, and let's expand this out a little bit so it shows it up a little bit better. All right, so it's also advisable if you're starting your week out on a Sunday or a, a Monday, you kind of maybe want to start it out like that. But so let's say we just started out on the 4th and we're just going to make our divisions every 7 days. So I don't need these grid lines, so I'm going to click on the grid line here and press delete. And now what I want to do is bring in my uh, milestone markers. To bring this in, I have to just select these two values, control C to copy, and just click anywhere in the chart and control V to paste. Now it's going to paste it as a stack column chart in there, and I don't want to do that. So what I'm going to do is change the chart type. So select on that particular item there, that, that bar, right click and select change chart series. And I want to turn that into, it, it sees it as series three. I want to turn that into a uh, scatter chart. I think I can probably choose a scatter chart with straight lines and markers, right? So now you can see that it's kind of giving you a preview of what it looks like. And it's also put a secondary axis on it. You notice Excel is pretty smart enough to figure out that this it should be on a secondary axis. So I'm going to select, I'm going to keep those with what Excel chose. Click OK. And now I have my marker. So now what I need to do is just kind of change some of the coloring and also add that label. Click on my particular marker and go to Actually, let's change the color. Change the color for it. Well, that gray is kind of okay, so I'll, I'll, I'll accept that default gray. Uh, let's see what would it pick for it. It picked this gray right here, so that's fine. I don't need the markers there at the the top and bottom that that particular uh, circle. So I'm going to take none. I'm going to select none. What I want to do now, though, is add a label. So with that selected, right click and add data label, and I'm going to add. A data label is automatically defaulted by adding uh, the value here. So I'm going to select that uh, and go under text options. And let's see if it's under, uh, let's see, label. Maybe, maybe it's under label options. Yeah, label options under the label options there. So I want to take the value from the cell. So I click on that. And which value do I want? I want to, I want to have this particular range. Click OK. And now you notice it's put it back, put it in. I don't need it up there but also I don't need the 80. So I'm going to take out the Y value and I'm going to take out the leader lines because what happens with leader lines is if you move the label too far out, there's going to be a line that's associated with that label back to that chart element. So uncheck that and we have our phase one here. All right. So I can also add a little color to that. Let's click on that. Uh, let me see. Click on that. Go to the paint bucket in terms of the fill. Let's give it a solid fill of, I think that orange color I had earlier is fine. All right, so that's that first milestone. Now the second milestone, do the same thing. Select that, Control-C to copy, go into the chart, Control-V to paste, 
and it's done the same thing here. And I, all I need to do is just change the coloring because it's give it, given another color because it's a second series of data. Just give it the, the same color here. And let's see if it added markers. No, it did not markers, so that's kind of nice. What I can do is right click, add data label, do the same thing I did earlier, select on the data label, go under the label options, and take the value from the cells. And I'll select uh, phase two here, this particular cell here, click OK, and of course take out my Y value, take out my show leader lines, and click on phase two here, make sure that's selected again, and fill it. Do the solid fill, uh, it selected the color I had last time, and we're almost done here. So one thing to consider is how far do you want this particular element to go up. So you can see here, Excel has thought, oh, okay, from zero to 90. If we wanted to kind of change that around and make it a little bit more pronounced or less pronounced, we can change the access boundaries. All right, so right now it's from zero to 90. And we have this at 80. So uh, as I said before, maybe I want to think about it as 80%, right? So I'll just type the maximum as 100. Press tab and it's going to increase that amount. So we don't have it all the way to the top, or if we wanted to, to, to always keep it 100, and then we just kind of change our value here, that's something you can also do. So it just depends how, how visual do you want these markers. So I'll just go ahead and click X here, and maybe if I knew it's always going to be 100, I can just put this as 100, right? 100, and this is 100, and it fits there, and I'll just remove this access label. Just select that, press delete, and now I have my Gantt chart with milestone markers. So as I mentioned before, you can change it. Like maybe this is not on the 25th, this should be on the 18th. I can select that 1-18-18, press Control Enter to execute it for both cells. And maybe this one changed to 215, or maybe it's gone out to 31, 31-18. Control Enter, and now it's moved out here. So that's the way that you can create a basic Gantt chart with some milestone markers. So I hope that helps. Thanks for watching.